I did an ice retention challenge video a while back with almost 30 coolers and on a few of them I left the drain plug just a bit loose for the first day or so and so some of that melted ice water drained out and by golly people had words. Dozens of viewers of that video commented about how the leaking coolers had an unfair advantage because everybody knows that if you let the ice water drain out of your cooler that the ice will last longer and yet dozens of other commenters said just just the opposite. Everybody knows if you leave the ice water in the cooler that it will last longer and therefore those coolers that leaked had an unfair disadvantage. Confused much? But wait, the plot thickens. So I took a poll on YouTube to ask you what you thought and the question was should you leave your melted ice water in your cooler in order for ice to last longer and your cooler to stay colder? 70% of people think you should leave the melted ice water in the cooler and 30% of people think you should drain it. So which is it? To drain or not to drain? That is the question. Gear up and get outside. I decided to run an experiment so we could settle this. Starts out with two identical coolers and contrary to my better nature, as many of you know who've watched my other cooler videos, I even pre-chilled them for a few hours. They both have the same amount of ice, approximately 55 pounds. I filled it to the brim, but I also included 24 cans of my favorite beverage, Coca-Cola. I wanted to include some drinks in there to get a more realistic read on how it would work if you were actually using this camping. So there's approximately a two to one ice ratio like most cooler companies recommend. Maybe even a little better than two to one in the ice's favor. Both coolers are in the exact same environment. They're just sitting in my backyard up against a fence that is north facing, so they'll be in shade. I have also put a thermometer in each cooler. These are Bluetooth thermometers that I can monitor from an app on my phone so we can track what the temperature does inside. Then obviously I'm going to have one cooler's drain plug sealed up tight for the duration of the test while the other cooler will have its drain plug loose and open. That way water can drain out steadily and slowly as it melts. And then I will be coming out and opening each cooler at least one time per day and probably a few times per day just like as if I were camping and using them outdoors. Ultimately we want to look at two things. Number one, does letting the melted ice water drain out make the ice that remains in the cooler last longer? And number two, does letting the melted ice water drain out keep the internal temperature of the cooler colder as well? There is a difference. Of course, I'm gonna track these results and take note that while these are both Coleman coolers, this principle should apply to any cooler or ice chest, whether it's a Yeti or anything else. Since now we're just literally waiting for ice to melt, I reached out to the customer service departments of six different cooler companies and I asked them one simple question, which was, is it better to leave the water in or to drain it out? The responses were quite interesting, so let's have a look at what they said. Starting with Yeti, perhaps the most popular cooler brand there is that we all know and some of us love, Yeti said this, and I quote, We recommend not to drain the water. The water helps to insulate the remaining ice. However, exposed food and meat should be kept out of the water. Make sure the food is well sealed. Then they provided a link to an article on ice retention in which it says in very bold text, Don't drain the water. Yeti makes it very clear their recommendation is to not drain the water with the claim that the water helps insulate the ice. Another reputable cooler brand that has been around forever in the United States and that is Igloo. And I quote, as ice begins to melt, if feasible, leave the water inside your cooler. The cold water keeps the ice chilled longer than the air that replaces it when you remove the water. Now this is sort of along the same thought process I had. The air heats and cools faster than water and therefore when you remove the water, you're introducing more air which is more susceptible to heating up more quickly, which could then potentially melt your ice faster. So there's another point for leaving the water in, but they're not the only ones that responded. If any of you watched the ice retention challenge video I did a while back, you probably know by now that the Orion Core Cooler won that challenge. And they said this, the water acts as insulation, so we recommend to let most of the water stay in the cooler instead of draining. There's another point for leaving the water in. Then I reached out to our local cooler company here in Idaho Cordova Outdoors. This is what they said. We recommend you do not drain the water from the cooler, period. That would be another point for leaving the water in. But then it starts to get a little more nuanced. Arctic responded with this. 
We would highly recommend to remove the water and refill the cooler with ice to ensure the cooler remains at the lowest temperature possible. However, if not possible, we recommend not to remove the water and to keep the water inside the cooler as long as possible as air is the number one enemy of ice retention. Huh. So they say do drain it if you can replace it with fresh ice. Otherwise, leave the water in because air indeed is the enemy of ice retention. So I guess there's a little something in there for everybody. The final company that responded to my inquiry was Canyon Coolers. And here's what Canyon had to say. We recommend draining your melted ice water because water will melt your ice quicker because it is at a higher temperature. There's a point for the other guys. So those of you who wish to drain your cooler, Canyon supports you. It's pretty interesting to see the responses here. Clearly, most cooler companies lean towards leaving the water in, but let's get back to our test and see what we find out for ourselves. It has been two nights since I put these coolers out here. So a nice slow trickle on the cooler that is draining. After almost two days, just a few hours short, both coolers look pretty much the same on ice levels. But what is the temperature doing inside? If I look on my app here, the cooler that is retaining water has had a low temperature of 32.9 degrees Fahrenheit, a high of 37.2 degrees Fahrenheit at the hottest part of the day yesterday with an average of 35 degrees. Interestingly enough, the cooler that is draining water has hit a low temperature of 33.8 degrees Fahrenheit, a high temperature of 39.7 at the hottest point in the day yesterday, the same time where the cooler that is retaining water got to 37.2 degrees and the average temperature in the cooler that is draining water has been 36.6 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's only a couple of days, um, but it's kind of interesting to see. Ice retention so far is the same, but the average internal temperature of the cooler retaining water is slightly lower. Let's see if that holds for the rest of the test. Four days later, I have finally found the good sense to change my t-shirt and it's time to check the coolers. The two drain cooler is still at a steady trickle. Let's look inside. Ah, so a significant reduction in the amount of ice. Okay, looking at the temperature inside, it has been an average of 39.8 degrees Fahrenheit in there. And the high today is about right now, actually, 51.1 degrees Fahrenheit. Today, the low temperature was 38.3 degrees. So as the ice recedes, the high temperature, it appears, is increasing. I imagine we'll see the same pattern in the not-to-drain cooler. Let's look at that one to drain as you're about the same level maybe a little bit higher just because there's more water volume in there so it looks like this overall the one with water has had I think it's still trending a little bit lower in temperature overall the average of 39 degrees and then today just over 50 degrees 50.2 50 the cooler that is draining water is trending about one or two degrees warmer in general than the cooler that is not draining water it has been five whole days now, and let's see where we are at in the two drain cooler. There we are. Still some ice, but getting pretty low. Over the last day in the draining cooler, the low temperature was 39.7, so that's creeping up a little bit, and the high was 55, and that was just about right now in the warmest part of the day. And then in the not to drain cooler, here we go. There we are, there is still some ice, but a lot of that is water, obviously. And in there we have, we've had a low temperature of 37.8 and a high of 49.8. So the low temperature in the, the cooler with water still in it is about two degrees cooler than the one that's draining. And the high temperature is about five degrees cooler than the one that's draining. So there's something about the air inside instead of water. I wanted to learn a little bit more about the science behind this. I dove pretty deep today researching this. I've read some peer-reviewed scientific journal articles. I've read blogs. I've read Q&A forums. But by far the most succinct article I found was on a website called ThoughtCo. The author of this is Anne-Marie Helmenstein. She has a PhD in science. She has been a chemistry and physics teacher and she put it very succinctly on here. Answering the question which is faster, 
melting ice and water or air. And I quote, assuming the air and water are both the same temperature, ice usually melts more quickly in water. The basic explanation for this is that there are more molecules in water that are more tightly packed than there are in air where it's more loosely packed. Think of it this way. In Idaho, we have fewer than 2 million people over a huge area, whereas in New York City, there are millions of people within a very small area. So you have much denser molecules molecules in water than you do in air. What that does is that allows more heat transfer between water and ice than between air and ice simply because there is more active molecules interacting with each other. Just like there's likely to be more germ transfer between people rubbing shoulders in downtown New York City compared to people walking around in the middle of the woods in Idaho. So this all bodes well for those of you who think that it's better to drain the water from your cooler. However, it's more complex than that. Remember that this principle is only crystal clear when the temperatures of both the water and the air that the ice is touching is the same. But we know, including from our own testing so far in this video, that the temperatures of the air and the water inside of a cooler are generally not the same. The air is going to be warmer. We can assume that recently melted ice water is probably only a couple degrees above freezing, whereas we've measured temperatures inside of these coolers during this experiment being as high as 55 degrees Fahrenheit, well above freezing. And we've observed that the air temperature inside of a cooler that is draining water is consistently higher than the air temperature inside of a cooler that is retaining the water. Air circulation and air tightness is also a key factor in how effective a cooler is at retaining ice and keeping your food cold inside. And I didn't even mention all the possible variables that could be introduced based on the chemical composition of the water, of the ice, of the air, of the cooler's inner plastic lining, at the end of the day, because we use coolers the way we do, opening and closing them, taking them and introducing them in all kinds of environments, whether it's a campsite, the boat, the back of the truck, all sorts of variables that figure into the way you use a cooler, it's not clear cut as to whether or not it's going to substantially help to drain the water or to retain the water. I mean, really, you're starting out the same either way in most cases, right? You're just putting ice in there, you're adding food, the contents of what you put in there could have an effect on it. Sometimes you don't want your stuff just to be soaked in water, and so you do drain it for practicality's sake, and it has nothing to do with ice retention. Ultimately, it appears that the real benefit of draining or retaining is likely so small and so nuanced that does it even really matter? Thank you, Dr. Helmenstein. I like hearing the viewpoint of an unbiased professional in their field. And if you like this video, I would appreciate it if you hit that like button and consider subscribing to the channel for more in-depth gear tests and reviews like this. Thank you. Six days in, let's see what the coolers look like today. To drain. Still some ice in there. Not a ton, but there is still ice. Not to drain. Still ice with lots of water. It was one week ago today that I filled these coolers with ice and put them out here. I'm ready for this test to be over. I have a feeling this is going to be very close. So for the record, it is 10.30 a.m. Here is the draining cooler. There is still some ice in there, but it's sparse. And the not to drain cooler also still has ice. How about them apples? It is now noon. Noon. And still some ice. Not to drain. Also still some ice. Oh boy, this is down to the wire. Okay, it is 4.45 to drain. Still a little bit of ice, just kind of that chunk right there. Not to drain. <gasps> OMGs, look. There is one little nugget, but I think we can call that done. I mean, that looks pretty done to me. We're right at the hour, six o'clock, and it has been seven days full since I added ice. And look, still a tad bit of ice in there. One week, I'm impressed. And of course, we already know this one is out. But that water's still cold and it's still chilly in there. I wanna see this through until all that ice is gone. Okay, it's 9 p.m. Out here with my flashlight. Let's see, this party's over yet. Oh my gosh, look, there's still a little nugget. It is 10.30, it is past my bedtime, and I'm gonna check this sucker one more time, and oh, voila! It's finished. 
No more ice. Over the course of an entire week, the cooler that was draining water did have a little bit of ice left in it, about five hours longer than the cooler without water. In the grand scheme of things, that's not a whole lot, and it tells even more of the story if we look at the actual temperature inside the cooler. Over the full week, the average temperature of the cooler draining water was 44.3 degrees Fahrenheit. The average temperature of the cooler that was retaining water was 41.5 degrees. That's about a one degree difference in the lowest lows, almost a three degree difference in the average temperature, and almost a seven degree difference in the high, favoring the cooler that does not drain water. Check out our website. I'm gonna put an article up there with more details and some charts that you can study if you're really into this. And one other thing I wanted to note that I found pretty interesting is even in those final moments of the ice disappearing from the coolers, there was still a noteworthy difference in temperature. At 4.45 p.m., which is about the time when the cooler that was uh, retaining the water ran out of ice, the internal temperature of that cooler was 49.5 degrees. Whereas at that same moment when the cooler that was draining water still had ice inside, its air temperature at that moment was 58.5 degrees Fahrenheit. So right there, that's almost a 10 degree difference, even though the cooler retaining ice still had some ice in it. So you can see the outside air temperature has an even greater impact on the internal temperature of a cooler that is draining water. So at the end of the day, I think this is one of those ridiculous situations where everyone's right and none of it matters. Those of you who think it's better to drain water because that'll make your ice last longer are technically right, although by a small margin because there's so many other variables going on inside of a cooler. But those of you that think it's best to retain the water, you're not wrong either because it looks like the average low temperatures will be cooler than if you do drain it. However, within those first few days, it doesn't really matter. When we look back to what the experts say and what the cooler companies recommended, I think Arctic probably had the best and most correct advice, which was, where possible, drain the water and replace it with fresh ice. Air being the worst enemy of ice, as Arctic put it. But at the same rate, if you can't replace that ice, Arctic recommended you leave the water in where possible. You can see that as more time went on, there was more variability in temperature in the cooler that was draining water compared to the one that was not. So what's your end goal? If you want ice to last longer, drain it. If you want your food to stay colder for longer, don't drain it. But guess what? The difference is so friggin' small that it doesn't really matter. So just do what you want, you stubborn <laughs> So with all that nonsense, what are you gonna do? Are you gonna keep leaving the water in? Or are you gonna drain it out? Are you gonna do something else? Let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear.